Hello dear friends and aspirants, welcome back to High Point again. In this lecture series of literary theory and criticism, we are starting a new literary theory. We are starting a video about a new literary theory and criticism known as New Historicism. New Historicism is a quite famous and quite familiar one as well. So if you are a first time listener of this video, uh, if you are interested to have more content related to English literature, literary theory and criticism and all, you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon while you subscribe so that you get a notification notification uh, whenever we upload a video in here or something in here and also visit my website if you are preparing for net JRF English language and literature then you can visit my website there we have given modules and uh, ample amount of study materials variety of study materials in our website uh, for your convenience to learn by one one by one for your NTA UGC net JRF English language and literature paper to and use Instagram ID to to reach out to me as well there too we are sharing variety of materials in the form of study cards reels and etc use this whatsapp number to know more about the study materials that we are providing there in our website and the free bonuses that we are giving to our students in the form of uh, personalized study guidelines and weekly test in every saturdays okay moving on about new historicism Let's have an introduction about it and after that we will see the major concepts, key concepts related to the theory and also key thinkers as well as key text related to the theory. Based on the idea that a literary work should be studied and interpreted within the framework of a prevailing ideas and assumptions of the historical era. So this is the gist of new hist historicism. In a, in a sentence we can say this. So new historicism is based on the idea that a literary work should be studied and interpreted within the framework of the prevailing ideas and assumptions of its historical era. So if you are studying um, Shakespeare, you must study in the framework or within the framework of the prevailing ideas and assumptions of the uh, historical ideas or historical era uh, Elizabethan age. Okay. So while new uh, historicism emerged, you can see that uh, new criticism which actually told uh, which actually claimed that there is no need that you go for the historical ideas, background of the work and all. You have to look solely into the work because a work is a self-contained um, identity, uh, self-contained ent entity because it can provide meaning itself. You have to have a close reading of the text. Do not look into the other ideas, extra textual ideas in order to look at in order to value or analyze a text that was new critics uh, was saying but uh, you know new historicism is completely in a way against to, to this idea and it says that you know if you wanted to have a full meaning of a text and if you wanted to understand the full meaning of a text or if you wanted to understand the text in its different dimension, different kinds of dimensions, then you have to look and study and interpret the work in the framework of the prevailing ideas and assumptions of its historical era. It examines both how the writer's times affected the work. See, writer's times is important. See, in new criticism, writer is not important, writer's intentions are not important, writer's background and emotions and uh, historical, uh, you know, background and the times are not important, okay. But here in new criticism, writer's times affect the work and you have to see how it affects and how the work reflects the writer's time, how the social things are reflecting, social, cultural and economics, everything is reflecting uh, in that work. It also examines the social sphere in which the author moved. So what was the social sphere, social, ca social category that the author belonged while writing this work? The psychological background of the writer. The social sphere is important. Psychological, uh, you know, background of the author was important. And the books and theories that may have influenced him or her. Suppose the uh, writer was a feminist then that psychological background or the assumptions and uh, theories influence that character that person as a writer must have reflected in his or her work 
right so all these things should you know should understand not only the writer's time not only the socio background of the socio cultural background of the writer the term new historicism was coined by stephen greenblatt remember it in his 1982 uh, introduction to the power of forms in the english renaissance actually for this work uh, stephen greenblatt wrote an introduction okay so in that introduction greenblatt coined the term new historicism remember that point next according to greenblatt what is new historicism new historicism was not a theory but an array of reading practices see it's not a simply a kind of theory that you should read the text this way uh, using this theory you have to read this way see new historicism is not a theory like that but it's an array of reading it's a kind of uh, array of reading practices that investigate a series of issues that emerge when critics seek to chart the text ways text in dialectical fashion both respects the society's behavior patterns and perpetuate shape or alter their culture's dominant codes see it's an array of reading it's different kinds of reading practices you can find in new historicism it's not a sole theory it's you know when we as readers or critics when we uh, you know get into a work when we wanted to analyze and investigate into a text then certain issues will get emerged you have to know how social behavior and patterns are represented in a text and also how it perpetuate how these representations perpetuate shape or alter the culture's dominant codes so there will be a dominant there will be dominant codes you know how those codes are altered negated perpetuated or shaped or emphasized in that text by representing society's behavioral patterns you have to know that in order to analyze and criticize or understand the text so while the critics seek into a text some issues will emerge related to these things so in order to understand and solve those issues you have to have a different kinds of uh, reading practices that's how new criticism is not a theory but an array of reading practices let's see who all are the major new uh, historicists clifford gritz louis montrose catherine gallagher jonathan dolimore jerome mccancy about the important new historicists we will have individual videos okay clifford gritz louis montrose catherine gallagher jonathan dolimore jerome mccann Moving on about the major terms or concepts related to a new historicism. First one is discourse. Discourse is important in cultural studies as well and new historicism somewhat related to cultural studies in a way because it also analyzes the cultural practices, socio-economic backgrounds uh, of a text related to the historical era in which it was produced. Okay, the first major term in hi New Historicism is discourse. The term New Historicist in general and Foucault in particular used to designate the system of thoughts, ideas and images that emancipate the concept of culture. Okay, so this discourse is a system of thought, ideas and images that actually emancipate the concept of culture. Foucault defines discourse as ways of, so if you remember this, then that's great. So Foucault especially, he gives a peculiar uh, or particular kind of definition for discourse as ways of constituting knowledge together with the social practices, forms of subjectivity and power relations which inhere in such knowledges and relations between them. Okay, so discourse, it's a way of constituting knowledge. So there are various kinds of discourses through that discourses. Actually, we are constituting knowledge. How this constitution will constitution of knowledge will happen with the social practices, forms of various forms of subjectivity, power relations that we have in society and which inhere the such uh, in such knowledges and relations between them how such knowledges are merging and what are the relation between such knowledges in a society so that's how discourse is defined by Foucault it's a way of constituting knowledge 
together with the social practice forms of subjectivity and power relations which in here in such knowledges and relations between them see about this course we have done an individual video in cultural studies you can uh, refer to that playlist okay if you want to have more details related to this course but that will be studied uh, and uh, from the background of cultural studies that's the only difference okay according to foucault truth morality and meaning are created through discourse so truth there is no absolute truth there is no absolute morality there is no absolute meaning then how these things are created these things are created through discourses in a discourse there will be some representations through the customized use of that discourse the customized representations and how these uh, representations become a custom through that truth morality and meanings are created none of them are absolute it can change um, according to the people according to the society according to the cultural social economic background of the people so truth morality meanings they are not absolute everything are plural now the second concept here we have thick description thick description thick description was used by clifford gertz we will have an individual video about him in his essay in his 1930 1973 essay thick description on word and interpretative theory of culture so in this essay clifford coins a term known as thick description gertz borrowed the term from gilbert ryle a british metaphysical philosopher at the university of oxford and used it to describe his own ethnographic method actually thick description was not clifford's own uh, terminology but he borrowed thick description the term from gilbert ryle uh, and ryle was a british metaphysical philosopher at the university of oxford and ryle used it to describe his own ethnographic methods and gertz stated that anthropology anthropology is study about basically about human beings or you know uh, how culturally and socially how human beings are surviving and living so that's what we are studying in anthropology gertz stated that anthropology's task is that of explaining cultures through thick description which specifies many details conceptual structures and meanings and which is opposed to thin description which is factual account without any description so thick description is that when we do anthropology anthropological studies so anthropology's task is that of explaining cultures through thick thick description okay so while we do anthropology skill studies we have to explain cultures through thick description which specifies many details so in thick description you will have many specific details how uh, various uh, functions are happening in cultural studies there will be descriptions about conceptual structures within the culture or a society there will be meanings how certain meanings are generated in certain cultures so you have to do a thick description not a thin one and thick description is opposed to thin description which is just a factual account without any description and thick description signifies dense description okay dense description of social life from observation through which broader cultural interpretations and generalization can be made so an anthropologist will go and stay with the society and observe how people are generating meaning how observe how people are carrying out the culture in, in their everyday life how they have identities how they are representing things see different strata social lives and customs will get observed within the culture within the society and that will even that observations will lead to broader cultural we wide cultural interpretations and generalization rather than just a factual account about the culture of the society or the society okay so thick description actually signifies a dense description a detailed one detailed observation detailed interpretations and generalization about a culture now let's see key texts related to 
new historicism those who want to know more about this theory you can refer to this text okay clifford gets the interpretation of culture selected essays published in 1983 jonathan dolimore's radical tragedy religion ideology and power in the drama of shakespeare and his contemporaries published in 1984 louis montrose new historicism redrawing the boundaries the transformation of english and american literary studies published in 1992 green blood and gallagher is practiced in eucratism so there are some more but i just selected the important ones you can refer to this text if you wanted to know more about new historicism um so read the titles again and again so that you remember them so that's all about new criticism if you wanted to know more about new criticism you can refer to my website there we have given a separate slot for new criticism under the module literary theories and criticism and visit my instagram and follow them visit my instagram follow it if you wanted to have more content a variety of content related to english literature at the same time use this whatsapp number if you want to reach out to me to know more anything related to the courses that we are providing or if you have any doubts comment your doubts and queries and suggestions if you have any and let me also know your impressions about the videos that we are sharing in our uh, youtube channel if you have not yet subscribed subscribe to it and press the like button if you liked this video okay? Okay meet you in the next video session until then stay tuned to high point and strive best for your upcoming NTA UGC net chair of english language and literature bye bye thank you